Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to understand the steps involved in procure to pay cycle. We'll see how to process a purchase order invoice and also how to process non-purchase order invoices. My name is Paresh and let's get started. So the topics that we are going to cover in this particular video is to understand the six steps that are involved in procure to pay cycle. We are also going to process a purchase order invoice and also see how to handle non-purchase order invoices. All right, so let's discuss procure to pay cycle. Now, usually in an organization, the procurement cycle starts with purchase requisition or sometimes it's also called as purchase request, where what happens is the users from various different departments of the organization will prepare a request of the material that's needed to be purchased and then will submit the request. Now, based on the organizational policies or the business process, the request may go through approvals. And once the purchase request is approved, it is then when it goes to the procurement team where the purchase team requests for quotation. So for example, let's say HR team in the organization raises a request to procure uh, some offer Office chairs right now when the request comes to the procurement team they don't just go and buy the item from any supplier in the market they get quotations from multiple suppliers in Dynamics 365 terms we call them as vendors and check who can give a better deal on the price and maybe then finalize a supplier what we call as vendors now once the supplier is finalized the purchase team of the organization which is the buyer in this case, raises a purchase order for the supplier. Now, upon receiving a purchase order confirmation, the supplier will let the purchaser, that is the organization, know the tentative delivery date. So say, for example, the supplier confirms that the chairs will be delivered in the next seven days. That is, on the seventh day, the organization will receive the office chairs. Okay, so people in the organization who are going to receive the office chairs from the supplier will confirm that the material has been received in the system. And how do they confirm? Well, in Dynamics 365 FNO, the term for this is called product receipt. All right. And sometimes you will also hear people refer to this as good receipts. So after the product has been received and after the product receipt is acknowledged, the supplier, uh, that is the vendor, will send an invoice to the organization. Now, this is where the finance team of the organization gets involved in the process and they update the invoices in the system that is the bill that the supplier sent to the organization is updated in the system and based on the terms of payments between the organization and the supplier for example you know they might have an agreement that the invoice needs to be paid within 30 days so based on that, the organization pays the invoice within those 30 days to the supplier. So these are the steps that are involved um, in procure to pay cycle. Now you will notice that the first four uh, steps I have marked in a different color and the last two I have marked in a different color. The reason behind this is that from purchase requisition to per product receipt comes under trade and logistics. That is the supply chain management process. All right. And the last two steps, that is um, invoice, receiving invoice from the supplier and payment to the supplier comes under the financial process. So trade and logistics and finance. So all these processes under trade and logistics and finance in combination uh, create the procure to pay cycle. Now, this is an ideal situation where you have all the six steps in procure to pay cycle. But imagine that, uh, you know, you have uh, your suppliers or vendors which are already known with, with, with whom you already have an established relationship. So in those cases, organizations do not go through, uh, you know, purchase requisition or sending a request for quotation to multiple suppliers. They already have a supplier with them. So they start the cycle with purchase order creation. So this is the thing where, you know, the supplier is known, you already have your terms with them and uh, you already know whom to buy with. So you just directly send them the purchase order and then move forward. Now, this is the situation where you are actually buying materials, right? So when you're doing any purchase orders, there are two things that you can purchase. Either you can purchase goods, materials, or you can purchase services. So for example, you have a uh, supplier 
who provides a service for booking travel tickets, right? So in those cases, you do not raise a purchase order actually because you're not buying some material. You are looking for some service, right? So you request for travel tickets and uh, you know you have your email conversations with the supplier, the travel tickets are booked and the supplier sends you the invoice directly, all right? So there is no actual purchase order creation over here because you're not actually buying a material but a service, but you're still liable to pay that invoice to the supplier, right? So these are called non-purchase order invoices. So in an organization, there will be various instances where a supplier sends you the invoice and those invoices are related to purchase orders. But there will be some other instances where the invoices are not related to purchase invo purchase orders. Okay. If an invoice is related to the purchase order, we go to the purchase order to start purchase invoicing all right to process the purchase invoices and if an invoice is not related to a purchase order well we still need to enter those transactions but we do that through something called as invoice journals so i will show you how does a purchase order form look like and also how does an invoice journal uh, form look like all right so let's go ahead and see that all right so here i am in the dynamics 365 fno environment and we are using the company usmf for the demo data all right so let's just go to the modules and under modules let's go to account payables and under account payables let's just click on all the purchase orders here you can see a list of all the purchase orders right and you can see that there are lots of purchase order created with different vendors for example fabricam supplier condos office supply and you know datum receivers and city of power and lights so on and so forth right so let's just open uh, one purchase order so in this video we are just going to see how a purchase order looks like now to to be able to create a purchase order and process invoices that is something that we will look in upcoming videos okay now let's just open that this is the purchase order header where it gives you uh, a summary section and then over here there are purchase order lines right and these lines are nothing but the materials that you are trying to uh, purchase so for example we have steel press frame cone and coil assembly dust cap fahrenheit cap uh, it provides the site the warehouse how much quantity uh, that you want to purchase the units the unit price and net amounts and so on and so forth basically um, you know there are different tabs where you uh, perform certain actions so for example under uh, you know the purchase you will basically uh, where when you have the purchase order um, you can confirm uh, the purchase order invoice and um, under receive you can do receipts and under invoice you know you can process the invoices so basically you know the finance people will come over here and process the invoice you know open the purchase order and then process the invoices from here if the invoice is related to the purchase order so what about those invoices which are not related to the purchase order that is the non-purchase order invoices all right so how do you process those well let's just go to our modules again at the accounts payable well throughout all the modules you will see this section called invoices all right and then you can open the invoice journal and in the invoice journal is where you process all the non-purchase order related uh, invoices all right so for example uh, this is the list of all the invoice journals i can select the journal and click on the lines and basically over here i enter all the lines uh, invoice lines uh, for the vendors right so um, this would be the account type which is vendor uh, we choose the vendor account um, and then invoice date uh, invoice description uh, and debit and credit and also um, the accounts to from which it has to be debited and credited all right so um, how do we process uh, these vendor invoice channels i will take you in detail in upcoming videos but this is the place where you process all the non-purchase order related invoices now similarly if you have to receive payments from the customer if you go to accounts receivables and over here on the payments, you can see the customer payment journal. And here's the place where you can process all the payments that you have to receive from the customer. All right, so let's just do a quick recap of what we uh, watched in this particular video. So by now you must understand the steps that are involved in procure to pay cycle. 
there can be instances where the invoices are related to purchase order so i just showed you uh, how the purchase order forms looks like and also the invoices which are not related to purchase orders those are called non-purchase order invoices and basically you use journals to process those kind of transactions right so the details of uh, working with purchase orders and uh, the details of working with the journals is something that we will look in upcoming videos so thank you for watching and if you like the video please do subscribe to the channel also do not forget to like and share thank you bye for now